Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. I'm here with the American Racing Series finale. And let me give you an update since the live stream with Danny Lightning yesterday. If you want to see some of the earlier races, just check out his live stream from um, uh, July 16th. Uh, we did a live stream together where I did a bunch of runs and stopped around race 59. Naturally, as expected, as soon as I got to race 61, I got stuck. Because the 007's difficulty in uh, runtime jumped by a substantial amount. It went from basically a 9.5 run in race 60 to 8.6, 8.5 runs uh, by race 61. So it jumped a full second. It's always going to be lock in number four that faces race 61. So whether you use this car, the Lambo, or the McLaren, or the Furai, you have to know that it's going to be an 8.5 opponent that you have to deal with. But actually, I pulled an 8.7 opponent. Uh, so there's hope that I could get lucky and get the slower opponent and actually beat him. Now, once I realized I had the issue, naturally, I ran back and realized I had three crates to go to get uh, to loyalty for my second stage six. The first one I got from the event was engine. And now the second one I got is naturally after paying for three crates, intake. So that's kind of disappointing. Um, you know, you pay money and I can tell you uh, the three crates actually gave nothing but green and blue fusions. I mean, literally three greens, two blue or four greens, one blue, nothing, even red came out of those three paid crates. Fortunately, loyalty gave a stage six, but unfortunately, it's not a very strong one. So the race itself is still extreme, extreme, meaning, you know, the good chances that I just won't beat it. So what I'm going to have to do now is to start spending gas pips and gold to get gas just to make it quicker and essentially try to get lucky and get an 8.7 opponent. I ran a McLaren um, on the first race. It was an 8.7 opponent. But again, you have to get that same opponent again to run that 8.7. So... Each time you see something other than that opponent, you're not going to get as easy a race, and chances are you're going to have to keep trying. So we will keep trying until I get to the opponent that I can actually beat. The thing is, I oh, 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 how about that? I beat him. Ha-ha! Good. This guy's slow, too. Good, good, good. So they, what I know is my car can run low 8.6s. That's actually a pretty good jump for intake. Um, this is why I put the old seven in this particular spot. The old seven is not the quickest at stage six, I mean, stage five only, but even the worst stage six, something like intake, it has a shot at doing a decent jump in time. I went from 9.0 right to 8.6. That's a pretty decent jump for intake. And in fact, it was just enough to push me through and just enough to get us uh, leveled up too, apparently on that race. So. That is all good news. I am not complaining there. Now, let's see what the next one is. 322 miles per hour speed trap. That is not going to happen uh, that easily. This is not a car that's going to do super high speed traps um, in the quarter mile without a struggle. So I did 309 on that one. I believe, I believe some tuning may get me there i'm at 311 and that's 11 mile per hour off but i have engine and intake both of which add to speed trap so tuning may get us through it's just a question how much tuning so i'm going to go ahead and play with the tuning a little bit then we'll come back once i realize whether the tuning is going to do it or not so i'm going to go ahead and go tune and then we'll talk okay the good news I was able to get 322 mile per hour. The bad news is I can't exactly remember how I did it. All right, so what I did is 2.0 nitrous, 2.42 and 55.45. Now, the trick seems to be you have to get to six gear instantly. So this will be easier for the iOS guys. Um, and then you have to hit nitrous right around 4,500. Uh, now I was playing around with nitrous timing between 4,000 and 5,000 a lot. Uh, and it seems to produce the best results. That doesn't mean that you necessarily get it on one try, and I may not get it on one try, but I'm certainly gonna 
uh, do my best here to try to get it. But at least I know it's doable without having to pay for more crates. Once I get through this hurdle, we'll deal with the next hurdle because there are a few more coming and it's not just this car that's gonna struggle, but every single car, unless you have them maxed out, will struggle somewhat. Now, as my video on how to do speed traps um, for beginners have indicated, you have to kind of play with different ways of driving the car to get the best result. For cars that go right to six gear, sometimes it's not worth it to launch at perfect because it's slower to get to six that way. This will allow you to get to six a little quicker. And we're gonna hit nitrous right around middle of 4,500 and we keep our fingers crossed. Oh man, that's close, but no cigar. Uh, what, 320, okay. So this time I got 320, whereas last time I got 322. So it's almost there, but not quite. So again, I'm gonna try to get to six as quickly as possible. And again, with this device, it's a little bit harder to get to six Oh, that one's closer. Ah, no, still not getting it. Very, very close. 321.1, so let's try again. Again, I'm gonna waste a lot of gas pips here trying to get this done, but I know it's doable and therefore I am not gonna pay for more crates. I'm just gonna go and try to get it by doing it just right on the nitrous. And there it is, yes, baby. 322 miles per hour achieved without another stage six. That was engine and intake only. Uh, not the strongest stage sixes, but certainly stage sixes that helps with speed traps, right? Engine turbo and intake almost always help somewhat with speed traps. I would have preferred to have body or nitrous, but hey, nitrous may not have helped this car as much as you think. So um, I'm okay with that. 292, much easier speed trap for the Lamborghini I already got a body stage six on this car. So I know for a fact this car should also be able to accomplish that speed trap relatively easily. Okay, and 311. Now, if you put the Lamborghini in a different spot, you may have to do 313 uh, versus where I have it, which is in the third position. Uh, let's watch that later. So <clears throat> hurdles number one and two has been done now we're moving on to uh the next one now this one's going to be with the uh mclaren 295 is nothing for this car this car is quick and again i already have some stage sixes on it same deal uh i have stage sixes i gained actually from uh, one from out of nowhere i guess one of the map events and then one from the event so far which gives it a pretty decent speed trap and therefore this wasn't even considered difficult so two difficult hurdles the 007 struggle through and actually required loyalty and extra crate what's going on here now it seems to be frozen oh finally came okay very glitchy right now with the game now that i made it through those um it's gonna be lock in number five which is the mazda now i locked in the mazda for number five not because i have it as the strongest car or anything but Certainly because, one, I was able to spend tickets to get a stage six, and two, I had already gotten a stage six through um, the crates free, one stage six. So, so far, the beauty of it is, oh, wait, I didn't, I have another stage six? Oh, yes, I have another stage six somehow. Oh, wow, wow, I must have gotten another one. Um, this is great. This is awesome. So I have another stage six. I must have gotten it on the free crate. I wasn't, I probably was clicking and wasn't looking carefully. Nah, I can't complain. Uh, another stage six might almost pretty much guarantee that I should be okay for race 79. So this is great. Now the Copo is maxed because I do need a car to buffer my chances to win uh, the relays. And the Copo is gonna be that car because my other cars are only gonna run just enough stage sixes to make it through each step of the event, uh, unless luck Lady Luck is, or Lady Donna is with me, uh, which she's not. So, um, so far, looks like one or two stage sixes on each car has gotten me this far, okay? Which is a lot better than uh, when I had the old seven, um, I was looking at the possibilities of dealing with a much tougher 
speed trap or a much tougher time if I put that car in the second slot where the McLaren is because you'll have to eventually face an 8.1 race and that would require at least three of the best stage sixes for that car to try to get through. So that's an issue. This way, the old seven was able to make it through on two of the weaker stage sixes so far without triggering any issues for me. Now, until we get to the end, of course, um, everything is still speculative as to whether I'm gonna run into another hurdle, but I'm a little more optimistic that the cars here now will be enough uh, to get me pretty close to the end, if not to the end. So we're gonna keep going and let's see what happens. All right, let's finish the relay and then we'll see how the next 10 races play out, but I suspect they won't be too bad compared to what I was dealing with earlier. Oh wait, I didn't even reset this car yet. Ah, all right, it's quick enough. Uh, I need to put that car back to a different tune for better time performance uh, versus speed trap. I forgot I didn't even go back to do that. So I'm gonna do that after this race. And then we'll come back and we'll keep tackling the um, races from there. Okay, so here's the Mazda, which is, again, it's a good car. Relatively quick in the current um, level of upgrades. Certainly very decently quick in the quarter mile as far as speed is concerned. And that's a good thing because it makes relays easier. So this relay really wasn't supposed to be tough anyway, but here we go. We just got the relay. Uh, we got the credits and we're gonna move on. So we'll catch back up in a second. Uh, once I get some gas and get this thing rolling. All right, gas is added and relay's done. Now I notice again, it, the game kicks you out to the map after every so many races. Again, I think this is just to slow you down more than anything. There's no real purpose to that other than, hey, you have to go and wait your way through coming back in again. Uh, it certainly could be argued that it's usable for uh, going out to check your tune, maybe it's a reminder, but really I think it's just more of a time sink than anything. All right, so the Mazda, I took the opportunity while I was adding gas to go back to the Mazda and add in that stage six I discovered. Turns out it is yet another intake. Um, I'm not complaining. I mean, you know, an intake uh, combined with my other two stage sixes, which is engine and trans, doesn't make the car super fast, but it also at least makes it better than what it was. Um, and hopefully helps me when I get to race 79. I'm hoping I don't have to really uh, buy anything for the Mazda. This car actually speed traps pretty well. So if I play my cars right and tune it properly, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I can make it through race 79 without pulling a single additional crate. Worst case, of course, I have enough um, in three days, I'll have another stage six anyway, but since we're already running the event, uh, waiting three more days just to finish it is kind of painful. So I'm gonna see what I can do to get this thing done. All right, so race 68, again, as, as you can see, what I meant by hurdle races, when you get to 61, 62, they were extreme. Since then, everything's like super easy, right? That's by design, I mean, it, once you hit those races where you get stuck, they're meant to get you stuck. Once you're stuck, you're stuck. Then it's either a patience, luck game, or it is a money spending game. So you spend, you go right through it. Or if you're patient and you keep your fingers crossed and you get lucky and get stage sixes during one of the free crates that happen to be both helpful and the one you need for the car you need, you may be able to get through this whole thing for free. It is possible, um, based on what I'm seeing right now, to get through the final, assuming you start off with all the cars and you got them upgraded and you have them with the right fusion amounts, meaning you really need full fusions, first of all. And then you also have luck with stage sixes from the free crates. It is possible to get through because I don't think any one of these cars need more than overall three stage sixes for this event. And the way I have mine set up, I'm actually kind of banking on the possibility I can get away with two stage sixes. Uh, so 
the Mazda has three. All my other cars, none of them have more than two. So that's kind of, you know, and I'm in the last 10 races here coming up where the next hurdle race is coming up and that hurdle race is gonna be race 71. But let's go ahead and get to race 70. Notice race 70, they kicked me out again. I don't see why, I mean, they can pop this stuff on without having to kick me back to map. But again, every five, six races or 10 races, um, you know, back to the map you go. Uh, maybe it's just to help you out, give you a break. But for most of us, I think it's mostly to slow down the overall progression. All right. Again, this is supposed to be easy. So I'm counting on it not being difficult to get through. So if I am correct, the next race should switch back to the McLaren, which is the first car, um, first prize car you lock in, lock in number two. Okay. Oh, no, it, it doesn't do that. It's saying extreme and it goes right in with the Mazda. So this is a little different than what I anticipated. I thought it was gonna be back to the McLaren. Now, what, with the Mazda, it's gonna to be tough because I remember this one, oh no, it is the McLaren. So why is it extreme? I don't get it. My McLaren should be able to beat the time this car is gonna run, which it should be at 8.1 or so. But, all right, let's go ahead and see what we can do. I mean, it could be a close run or it could be that car's really fast, I don't know. Or it could be the McLaren Beast Dino, who knows? All right. So yeah, this is the next one I was anticipating to be a hurdle race and wow, it was uh, even faster than what I anticipated. I've seen uh, times posted of 8.1 for race 71. Uh, this time, again, this is your second lock-in that has to face this race. And this time with a 7.8, I mean, that's really quick. Um, and my next race is also extreme, so race 72, hurdle race yet again. So 61, 62, 71, 72, all designed to hold you up. Okay, this one's tricky. So the Lamborghini can do 313 mile per hour. I have this in position number three, and it is 319. Now if I swap this car for position four, um, the difficulty would have been dealing with that 8.6 run, uh, but the speed trap might have been a little bit slower. Now, as good as this Lambo is, I don't think it's gonna do um, 319 right now. I mean, even with tuning, that's really pushing it. So 313 is possible with one stage six, which I have, and that's body. So it looks like we're gonna have to get another stage six. So. But that only requires two, right? So it, again, it doesn't change the fact that these lock-ins ultimately should only require two. Now, if I get transmission, it won't help me. So there's, there is some luck involved here, but at least from my position of looking at it, it's possible to get through, again, with no more than two stage sixes, I'm hoping for each car. And the Mazda is gonna be the final test. We don't know about that. Okay, so let's take a look at, we're gonna go to the Lamborghini. And I'm pretty positive I have only one stage six, and that is the one from the event on this car. Uh, the good news is I got body, which actually is pretty strong for uh, speed trap and performance. So it, it put me pretty close, but it definitely needs one more stage six to make it through. Again, if I was, Playing this and money is the biggest calculation in the overall factor. This is again a point where I would wait three days, um, get that extra stage six from loyalty. Uh, that would have happened both for the 07 challenge and for this challenge, but the both cars would get the loyalty at that point. Uh, so I would get one more stage six that way. But right now I only have one. I'm just gonna go ahead and buy it and get it done. But uh, you know, it's, it's probably best just to wait those next three days, get to loyalty, and get it that way. Let's go ahead and take a look at the crates again, um, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. We get one free one every day uh, from the series, and we're four days into this so far. So in three days, you will get loyalty. Now, I already went through and did this for the um, 
07. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now for the Ascenza. I'm going to go ahead and purchase three crates and get a stage six. And we'll show you what I get uh, on that uh, for those uh, results. But I'll tell you if they're good or bad. But we don't, we're not going to watch through uh, the individual poles themselves. All right. Excellent. You bought another useless crate. I, I can tell you right now, the last two crates are nothing but green and blue fusions. So if you were looking for red fusions out of these paid crates, I'd suggest you to wait for the free ones because they're just terrible. Now for Lamborghini, you should not pay for these fusions anyway. You're almost better off buying a bunch of uh, Huracans and go with that route. Now I finally saw a red fusion there, but look at the number of greens. All the greens and then one cheesy red. And finally I get my loyalty, which Yes, it's nitrous. That's usually very good for what we need to do. Okay, let's go throw that on and go jump right back. I'm going to do some tuning and save you the effort of watching me uh, practice the tuning. But we'll, we'll do the same thing we did with the old 7. Once I get the tune down, the video will come back up and then we'll go ahead and show you the 319 speed track. All right, we're back. We're looking at the Ascenza's last uh, tune run, which is 327. Now, Nitrous is so good for speed traps that I actually did not have to use my tuning technique to try to go faster. Basically, I left it at 2.0. Now, if you're a little bit less um, strong with the stage sixes, what you're gonna wanna do is to put final drive where the top speed tops out, or half mile is important, but not as, but top speed tops out at the uh, target number, which is 319 in this case for me. It'll be something like, um, you know, you, you want to make sure half mile also can hit it. So probably around here, which is like a 2.23 or 2.24, uh, straight to six and nitrous, uh, where the nitrous run out. Now you have four seconds of nitrous once you get that. So you're going to use nitrous a lot earlier than if you were um, at stage five nitrous, which is 2.0. But regardless, it saves me the effort of having to retune the car afterwards. And I can now go and crush that 319 mile per hour speed trap. And that should allow me to then get through to almost race 79. Uh, and that's where the big question mark is going to be, is the Mazda going to be good enough with three stage sixes and two of them being engine and intake, which is like, you know, how I had the old seven. So um, again, speed trap is going to be extreme. Is why, why is because on the dyno, uh, the car still only dynos 285 in the quarter mile. Uh, so driving technique and nitrous timing is very important. Even if you have the car with the uh, more stronger upgrades, if you drive it like normal, you're not going to hit that speed trap as easy. What I find is don't even need to launch the car because it'll allow you to get the six quicker and then just hit nitrous. In this case, I'll hit 319 no problem. But you know, with, with again, with shorter nitrous duration, different stage sixes, it might be more of a struggle and therefore you may need to uh, play around a little bit. So in this case, I hit almost 329, um, get some epic fusions. Thankfully, wait, actually that trans might be useful on one of my cars I stripped it off of. So anyway, epic fusions are always useful for everybody. We can never have enough of them. So never complain when I get them, whether it's a duplicate or not, sooner or later, you're going to be looking for that and you're not going to have it. Okay. Now we, we're starting to going to see these uh, relays saying that it's going to get really tough. Orange, orange is easy. Okay. Uh, red is hard if it's three bars of red and red is impossible if it's four bars of red. So three bars of orange is to me basically easy. So I'm not going to worry about it. I think again, um, as long as I drive my cars kind of right, I should do just fine here with this, um, this particular relay. Okay, so again, the Nissan's quick. Don't get me wrong, it's quick. I'm not too worried about them. It's getting less hard, yes. I like less hard. Less hard means easier. I like easier, so. Every little bit counts. Here we go. All right, 07. Again, with that intake, that made this car kind of fast. Um, 8.6 car, so 
shouldn't be an issue here. And finally, the Mazda actually is really good uh, in the quarter mile, which makes it perfect for relays. It actually makes your relay life easier because it's a fast quarter mile car. All right, Mazda time. Bring the Fury. Actually, bring the Fury. Feel the Fury. Okay. Actually, more like hear the Fury because it's the sound of the wind. So it's not, uh, you won't feel it, you'll hear it. Well, you feel the wind and hear the wind at the same time. Who knows? But anyway, it's a cool name. I really, uh, the Mazda Fury, I just wish it was better in the game. Uh, no regrets in getting it. I mean, with minimal upgrades, it's still pretty viable in live racing. It just isn't super good beyond that. Um, but it's still a cool Mazda to have. It's certainly one that I have no regret having in the game. It's really cool looking. Just a nice, cool car all around. See, again, 74 back to blue. Um, we are over the hurdle races, and we're coming up on the final hurdle, which is race 79. So. From here to race 79 should be nothing. Race 79 80 should be the last two hurdles you have to deal with. But for the relay, again, with the cars as fast as they are now, I have no problem um, getting through that. In fact, I'm not even worried about it. It's race 79 that's gonna be the real trick here. So my little gamble, in a sense, paid off um, with just needing two stage sixes uh, for each car, which, you know, if I waited three more days, we may be having this conversation with me never even reaching into my pocket. Uh, but at least I still have the possibility in three days of getting another stage six for the Mazda, which means I could be up to four stage sixes for the Mazda. Uh, and that's part of the reason also I locked the Mazda in last because I start off already having trans. Um, and then one of my free crates gave me engine and now somehow I got intake too so I, I mean I've been really lucky so I'm, I'm not the Mazda I've just been really happy with I, I, I think I locked it in in the right spot although in three more races I could be crying to you guys on here saying oh that was a mistake blah, blah, blah. we'll see we'll see um, now it, the speed trap cannot be as fast as the one for the um, for example, if you locked in the McLaren last, because, it, oh, what did I just do? Oh, well, it's a speed trap anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the, it, it cannot be as fast as the McLaren because the McLaren tops out at like 360 something max, uh, and I think the, or 350 some max, and the, the speed trap was like a 324 mile per hour, is what the guys that used the McLaren's got. The Mazda only tops out at 322 fully max. So where, where can they put my speed trap? They can't put it at 325. That's impossible. So I'm expecting something in the 300s, um, low 300s would make sense. Maybe something like 313, 310, 305. But in all those situations, three stage sixes, and, and again, trans is useless, but two stage sixes may cut it. So that's what I'm banking on here and I'm really, Either I'm gonna luck out here or I'm gonna to have to reach in my pocket yet again. Um, I'm $27 into this thing, counting taxes. So it's not too bad, right? Uh, six crates, 24 bucks, plus tax, so about $27, 26, $27. Um, I, I, I'm almost thinking that's kind of cheap. Um, going into this, I was budgeting much greater numbers than that. So it's not too bad, in fact. Um, assuming you had not spent hundreds of dollars already to get here, but. All right, here we go. I mean, this is, this is like a total event cost of less than 150 bucks, I think. And, you know, I, I didn't calculate anything from before this, so that's a wild guess at this point, but. Um, I would have to look at receipts. But the point is, for this part, I am really 
pretty happy. I mean, this is. It's not free. It could be free. It could have been free, I should say. If I was three days later on waiting on this to make the video, I may have even possibly been able to go through this whole final without spinning. That would have been interesting. But hey, I'm not complaining. The advantage here is that I can actually get this video done earlier and get it to you guys. All right, here comes extreme. This is definitely going to be extreme. I'm, I'm, what I'm really curious about is how extreme is it going to be? Come on, show me the number. Oh, 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 yes. Yes, it's easy. It's easy. Oh, my God. That means for the Mazda, they did a really slow speed trap. Oh, yeah. It's done, baby. IndyCar, here I come. Woo. Yes. Yes. All right, hold on. Let's see what the speed trap. 287. Oh, that's a joke. 287. Oh my God. Oh, oh, I lucked out. I definitely lucked out. All right, and 297. Yes. Okay, 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 guys. Th this deserves to. All right, 287. That's great. If you're locking the Mazda last, you only get 287 compared to 324 for the McLaren. Okay, so how hard is really 287? After we finish getting the Indy car, let's go back and find out what the Mazda needs for 287, because I can tell you it won't need that much. Uh, I think one stage six, or maybe even no stage six. I'm, I'm, we'll have to look, we'll have to look. But now I'm, wow, 287. Okay, okay, extreme, of course. Final race, definitely extreme. But again, I know it's hard to see for you guys. It's not 100% extreme. It's only three quarters extreme, which is, as I always say in every one of these events, three quarters extreme is more like hard. And hard is easy, easy, it's just ridiculously easy, and then that's that. So I'm not even breathing hard here. My heart rate's down, I'm relaxed. I could be sipping a beer and eating my Grey Poupon and doing these races because it's that mild and easy because there's no stress involved none zero once you beat the first nissan you got the rest of them and none of them are going to be an issue and it went down slightly less extreme just a hair just a hair less extreme all right mclaren's a fast car so i'm not expecting any issues here one Boom, boom, and off we go. Look at that gap, gapping him. He's done. He got nothing for me. <laughs> okay, all right, race number three. Lamborghini is a little bit tougher on um, getting a great time on the, on the uh, quarter mile, but then remember the Mazda is really fast and the old seven's decent too. They're all decent, actually, in the quarter mile. So none of these cars are gonna fall on their face for you. Um, so you should be fine. You should be fine. If you got this far with each of these cars in this order, with those upgrades that, you know, the two upgrades that'll get you through the speed traps and the hurdle time races, you really shouldn't have an issue getting right on through to the end here. We're so close now, 07. Um, Okay, 07 again. Let's get it done. Okay, it's a good car too. And look at that gap. Look at that gap. Goodbye. All right. Indy card is mine. It's here. And it, it went another hair easier. Just a little hair, just a little bit. So. But my gamble paid off big time on the Mazda. Even if I didn't have um, the stage sixes that I have, I think the Mazda would have done just fine for that speed trap. In fact, we're gonna go back, like I said, and test that speed trap against uh, far less upgrades than what I have. Now, I told you already, transmission, which I have, is completely useless. I bought, oh, that's how I got the engine. I bought the engine using those tickets, so the, engine stage six came from tickets and the intake stage six came from god knows where i, I don't actually remember getting it um 
But hey, one of those random crates must have paid off with a stage six while I was looking away for some reason. I'm taking it and I'm not complaining about it. So somewhere out there, I managed to get an intake. Normally an intake just makes me cringe, but in this case, because I had engine, I had trans, that intake was more than enough to push me through. I remember engine by itself, if you pay for it with the tickets, was enough to get this job done for 287 mile per hour. So there you go, the Mazda really didn't need that much. To get to 320 something for the McLaren though, you're gonna need more. Uh, the McLaren for 324 miles per hour required at least two strong stage sixes. Um, so is it just me or is it missing something up front here visually? Is it the shadows weird or something? Anyway, here is the Indy car. Whoopee. All right, so now I can drag race an Indy car. That's, that's, that's a good thing, I guess. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. All right. So there's the Indy car. I'm going to move it. That's going to be a lot of garages of shifting around. Uh, I'll deal with that later. Let's go back and take a look at that Mazda real quick because we're going to wrap up this video to give you guys the, the clearest idea of just what is needed to hit 287 with the Mazda, assuming you agree to lock it in the way my patterns went, which is McLaren first, Lamborghini second, uh, Glickenhaus 07 third, and Mazda Furi last. So this became the car that I used for race 79, which turned out to be easy. Wow, I was impressed with how easy it was. All right, turns off, engine off, intake off. So we're going to go ahead and finish real quick, see where we can get mile per hour wise, quarter mile with ultimately just engine, I think is what you need. But let's see what stage five only can push to, first of all. All right, now 287. Now that I know it's 287, I can set the car to 287. Okay, 288, 288, 287.9 right here. Tire is already 53.47. It says 262, but I think you can definitely hit well over that with this car. This is one of those cars again. In fact, all these cars seem to have that same uh, speed trap pattern of basically skipping the six and then hitting nitrous just right. You launch it at idle because it actually allows the slower devices like mine to get to a uh, better spot when it comes to getting through. Uh, as you can see, we hit about 280, I think on that one. Okay, so 287 isn't likely a stage five only, but let's go back and add that engine and I am guaranteeing you that engine will push that extra seven mile per hour. So that's where you can get the Furai through the end, uh, basically without additional stage sixes. And I don't think any of the speed races the Furai had to face was anywhere near uh, what the car could run, which even with just engine, you're looking at a eight second something, low eight second car or mid eight second car. So I don't think you have a problem with the speed. Um, the only issue you're gonna have is the speed track, okay? The, the time run should be just fine. 8.9 8 might be kind of close on some of those, but we're already um, at 274. And I know that using the same driving technique, I should have no problem getting 287 this time. And that's it. That's, so the Mazda, you don't need to spend any money. Uh, you just need to have some tickets, uh, which is actually, the Mazda has the least number of tickets required at only um, 3,000 tickets, I believe, is all you need to get the um, engine stage six. So, hey, it's a win-win. Uh, less tickets get you there. Stage six, one stage six will get you there. Look at that, no problem, 291. And I even, I, I forgot, I even launched at idle, which probably could have given me even a little more push. You definitely get on a free stage six in a few days. You may get lucky and get a stage six in between. Boom, done, okay? IndyCar in the bag. So final breakdown of my lock-ins, Copo, fully maxed. You still want that first car fully maxed, whether it's the Ford Cobra Jet, the Copo, or the HPE, it doesn't really matter. The point of that car is to help you in the relays. Fully max is the way to go. And fully max, you won't have any problem with speed traps or sprints. Second car, McLaren, right here. And the inbuilt 
for this car had a total of two stage sixes, um, and they are, in my case at least, uh, engine transmission. Engine transmission, I think. Yes, engine transmission, that's all I got. Oh, I got transmission. Wow. I don't think that helps with the speed traps at all, but I didn't have a problem with the speed traps. The first lock in the, of the prize car's biggest hurdle isn't the speed trap, it's gonna be, really the issue is gonna be that 7.8 to 8.1 time run. Then, um, I locked in the Lamborghini, and that car required, as you saw earlier, uh, two stage sixes. I happened to get nitrous and body. I really locked out. The body was given to me in the event, and nitrous was given to me as loyalty. Both were excellent stage sixes for this car. This car could be a problem child if you get really bad stage sixes. Uh, then you may need three, which means possibly more waiting and more frustration. Uh, the Glickenhaus turned out to be pretty decent, even with lousy stage sixes, which really is why I kind of put it where I did in position number four. I could possibly switch the Lamborghini and this car, okay? Because this car is harder to get fusions for, whereas the Lamborghini is easier. If you switch them, the only real challenge for you would be the speed trap in the 8.6, 8.7 run for race 61, which isn't that bad for the Lamborghini either, but the Glickenhaus um, did it as well with uh, two stage sixes and not the strong ones either. They're, they're actually not that good, but engine, again, helps a lot with speed traps and I managed to pull an intake on loyalty, which sucked, but apparently intake's not terrible enough to prevent me from getting through, so two stage sixes on this car and finally Mazda, all you need is a engine using tickets and you're done you can get the Indy car. And that is the entire uh, last 20, well, last 19 races of the um, American Series Finals. Until you get to that point, your cars can be stage five only and make everything. So these hurdle races at 61, 71, 62, 72, you know, and then ultimately at 79, these are the ones you're really upgrading for and you have to really get lucky with the upgrades to get through. So thank you for joining me for this video. Let me know what you think. I mean, this is actually slightly easier event overall than I anticipated. But again, I think my pattern of lock-ins um, worked out pretty good for me at least. The reason, again, I put the McLaren first is because that car is super fast at stage five only. I was able to hit stage, um, uh, stage six. I was able to hit 7.8 with just two stage sixes versus the rest of these cars all start off in the nines and you're not gonna hit 7.8 without at least three, uh, possibly four stage sixes. That's the reason I put the McLaren first. And then I was banking on the Mazda, which speed traps well, but doesn't have super high top speed, getting a slightly easier speed trap, which it did. So the gambles paid off, and therefore my locking patterns got me through a minimal cost out of pocket. All right. If you like the video, leave a like. If you like my channel and like my videos, subscribe, hit the bell, get notifications, check out my new videos as they come, um, as I put them up and they become available. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.